Sketchit is a basic sketch program offered by SFREP that's included in your Appraise It subscription plan. When you start Sketchit by going to the Tools menu in Appraise It Classic or Appraise It Pro, you'll be presented with a blank sketch area. Up top is the toolbar. Mousing over the icons will give you a tooltip explaining what they do. You can also use the text menus and there are hotkey combinations you can use that are listed next to the text menu selections. When you're ready to begin sketching, click the page plus icon on the lower toolbar to create a new sketching area. Think of an area as a floor, outbuilding, basement, or garage. In the create area dialog that comes up, select the category for the area, in this case, living area, as we want to add to the gross living area. Next, the area name, we're going to select first floor. Finally, we will set post 2 as 1. Usually this will correspond to the floor you're drawing. There's also B for basement and G for garage. This will set which line this area will post to in the square footage calculation addendum. Next, we'll select if this area will add to or subtract from the total square footage. Choose the font for labels and select a fill-in pattern for the area. Under the dimensions section, we have selections that determine if and when measurement labels will be added to the sketch for both exterior and interior walls. And finally, under options are checkboxes for print calculation detail and included in category summary to show or not show measurement information on the sketch in Appraise It. In almost all cases, you'll want to leave these checked. So in this sketch, we're going to sketch the outside walls of the first story of a two-story house. Since everything here is already set up to do this, we'll just click Create. You'll now notice that my cursor has changed to a plus symbol, or more accurately, a crosshair. While we can sketch with the mouse, it is much easier and more accurate to sketch with the keyboard. So we'll place our crosshair in the upper left-hand corner of the page and begin sketching from the back left corner of the house. Click the mouse to drop the pen. On the keyboard, we'll type out 5-0 and then hit the right arrow button to draw a 50-foot back wall to our house, then hit enter to lock in the line. We'll continue along the right side of the house, now to the front, and here we have a bay window. For the bay window, we'll come down 5 feet, but we won't hit enter to lock it in just yet. Instead, we'll now go over 5 feet to create a 45 degree angle. Hit enter once to lock it in, now 10 across, then reverse the process to complete the window. By the way, once we get to our last line, we can use the control C combo to auto close the area. Since our area is a bit off center, we can either press this icon button up top to center it in the page, or we can go to the layer menu and select move to click and drag it to the top center, leaving us room to draw a second floor below. To draw our second floor, we'll click on the Page Plus button up top again to bring up the Add Area dialog. This time, under Area Name, we're going to select Second Floor. Note how this automatically changes the Post 2 number to 2. Now we'll just click Create. Just as we did before, we'll draw the second floor of the house below the first on the same page. Sketchit allows you to draw precise arcs with just a few keystrokes. We can draw an arc using one of two methods, by entering the chord length, arc height, and the direction, or by entering the arc angle and the direction. Of these two methods, we're only going to cover the entering of the chord length and the arc height since it's the easiest to measure in the field. To draw our arc, we'll need to know two key measurements. The chord is the straight line between the beginning of the arc and the end, and the arc height is the straight line between the center point of the chord and the peak of the arc. So to draw our curve, we'll first enter the length of the chord, then the arrow key for the direction in which we want to draw. Next, we'll press Control B and the Create Arc dialog box will appear. We'll ignore any angle data that may appear in the angle field, but we won't delete the value. Sketch it will calculate the new angle once we enter the chord length and the arc height. Note that the chord length is already there, it's what we drew just a second ago. Now we'll enter the arc height, and then click on OK. The angle will be calculated and appear in the angle field, and the arc height value will default back to zero. Now we'll just click OK again, 
and SketchUp will draw the arc. Hit Enter to lock it in. Since interior walls don't really add to or reduce the square footage of a structure, you don't need to create an area for them. Instead, they're just associated with the area you have selected up top. We'll use the pull-down menu to select the first floor. To draw first floor interior walls, we go to the Create menu and select Lines. We can also use this icon here in the toolbar. We now have a drawing cross here. Just as when you're drawing exterior walls, there's a few ways you can draw interior walls. You can free draw them by clicking on the mouse to drop the pen and then move it around, clicking each time you get to a corner, or you can use the arrow keys. The best method, however, is probably once again using the arrow keys to type in the measurements you probably took while inspecting the house. Move your mouse or crosshair near a corner of the house and then press the J key on your keyboard. This will jump the cursor to exactly on the corner. Now, without dropping your pen, type in the measurement from the corner to where the first wall will begin. In this case, we'll make it 20 feet to the right by typing in 20 and then pressing the right arrow. This will move the cursor 20 feet to the right along the back wall of the house. Since the room shares two walls with the outside of the house, we only need to draw the two interior walls. To drop the pin, we press the Enter key once, then type in 10 and the down arrow to draw a 10-foot wall towards the front of the house. A single Enter locks in the corner point. Next, 20, and then the left arrow key will draw the 20-foot wall, and a double Enter will set the corner point and pick up the pen. We'll need a door to enter the room, so to add one, we'll go to the Create menu and then select Icons. In the resulting pop-up window, we'll go down the list and select Door. By default, the door will be 2.5 feet wide. Let's change that to 3, and then click OK. Now we can move the icon over the interior wall, then click to drop it. We can then select additional icons or just click Cancel if we're done. Now we're ready to transfer the sketch. Before we do, let's take a moment to make sure that everything is aligned by going to the Area menu, and selecting Move. Move each area so that it's centered with the other. Don't worry about centering both on the page. We'll do that automatically in just a second. Once everything looks good, we'll click the Center Sketch button up on the toolbar to align the entire sketch into the center of the page. When we're ready to transfer the sketch to appraise it, all we need to do is go to the File menu and select Save Sketch. We don't want to change the default file name because if we do, it'll break the link between this sketch and this report if we try to edit the sketch in the future, so just click Save again. Appraisal will flash a few times as data is transferred in, and then we're all done. Just close Sketch It. We can view the sketch in Appraisal by clicking on the SKT button up top. Information is also transferred into the square footage addendum and into the relevant spots in the main report. If we need to make any changes to the sketch at any time in the future, we just need to open the report file and appraise it, and then open SketchUp from the Tools menu. We can then make any changes needed and save the sketch again to transfer the updates to the report.